So a few people had asked if I would shoot a video showing all the different ways to cook in the fireplace, and I'd love to do that today. But before I do that, I want to show you my kitchen table. So this kitchen table was originally the attic floor of the original log cabin that I tore down that was built in the early 1800s. The roof was starting to collapse in. There wasn't a whole lot of floor plankings left up there. They're poplar, so if you take off that surface, you just get a white wood that looks brand new. So all I did was sanded them down a little bit, left all the marks from where the coons were crawling in the old attic and all the dents from walking or storing stuff up there. I just left all that on there and then cleaned it off as good as I could, washed it down good, and then oiled it. Um, with a beeswax type oil that I keep on it from time to time. Um, and I've always just, I, I love this big table, but I love it more when it's full of people. So for me, that's why I do this, whether it's the pizza oven in the backyard or this big table. Yeah, it's nice to look at right now, but it's even nicer when it is a mess and there's people sitting all around it laughing and having a good time. So, so that's really, for me, that's why I do this, is to give people, to give people that feel of what it was like to live back then. Um, quieter, cell phones put away, whether it's just sharing a cup of coffee with one or two people, or um, we have the missionaries that, that come here weekly, if it's sitting, sharing a meal with them, and just enjoying the fire, enjoying the food, enjoying the company, the fellowship, that's why we do it here. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's get over there and I'll start showing you what there is to do with the fireplace. Okay, so we have the percolator, of course, for our coffee, let me get a glove here to get out of there and of course it's on it's hooked up to the crane which is standard for all old fireplaces um, a lot of this stuff that I have here at the cabin was given to me and this crane is no exception someone saw me building the fireplace through my Facebook account and they had this laying in their barn and they're like, oh man, you gotta have that. I had no intention of putting this crane in there. I had a different one I was gonna use because I couldn't find a nice one like this. Um, he had this, gave it to me. So there's that. The hook that I have on here, it's a little too hot to grab. The hook that I have on here, I collect old stuff like this. Just anytime I see it, um, I don't think this was intended for this purpose, but it fits there really good. It's an iron hook from the early days, and I think I have a couple of those. They had a piece of chain hooked on them. I don't even know what they were used for. It doesn't matter. They are perfect for dropping on here. So I use this if I have to hang a kettle. No matter where I want to hang it, it fits on there nicely. And then I also have... It used to be one chain, but... I made it into two because I didn't need it that long. This is a piece of old hand forged chain that again, I don't know where I got it. It was probably in a box of stuff that people, people just bring stuff here and leave it on my front porch or they want me to come to their house and they have a bunch of stuff that they want to give me. And matter of fact, I even have a place to go to today that someone has seen the cabin and they have stuff that they think will fit in. So I go get the stuff and bring it home and I sort through it. and keep what I want here and store the rest away in, in case I need it later. So anyway, it's an old piece of hand forged chain that fits over here nicely depending on um, which way I want to hang a pot. I could hang it like that and I could hang a kettle off of there. So I could hang the kettle off of it there or if I need it to go lower, I can adjust it just wherever I want it so that I could hang a pot off of it. Anyway, so there's the crane. And of course, with the crane, there is a...
just this is probably one of my favorite kettles because it's just the two of us here. Um, so it's just a small kettle with a little handle. So that that's that's one of my favorites. So I can hang just whatever I want over the fire. And like I say, there's all kinds of those that are just, anyway, let's move on. So then the crane comes out. I made it so the crane would be removable. So it's not in the way when I do other styles of cooking. So the crane comes out. Okay, next. We have a rack that I did not build. Um, I purchased it at a Renaissance festival. It's more made for out in your yard, but like right now it's cold, it's windy out there. I'd rather cook here than I would out in the elements. So I just, the wind is blowing like you would imagine. That noise is the wind whipping outside. But here we go. The rack basically is hand forged. It's got a loop on one end and then I bent this to fit in the back. So this drops on here like so. And then the longer one goes across the front like that. But before you put it on, there is a whole bunch of these pieces that you put with the loop up. You can just drop them on there. And again, we don't do this because it's easier, but because we're tired of living fast. We just want to slow down. And instead of going through a drive through we just want to build a fire and watch our food cook. And then just sit in there. For me, it's knowing how very little I need. Like, I just don't need much to survive. So, a little fire and a little bit of meat over the fire and I'm good, so. So anyway, you just stick that on there like that and then sort these out. Depending on what you're cooking, if you're going to cook a steak or something and you need them closer together, you can just leave them all toward the inside. Now, what I do most of the time is my big breakfast skillet. This is the one that I use most frequently in here. So basically I can cook anything I want in there. I can cook for six or eight people pretty quickly with that little skillet, with that little fire in there. So perfect. And then anything else that you can throw on there. My other favorite, this is the other one that I like a lot. A nice little thin and it gets hot fast. So anyway, there's that rack. Now a lot of times what I'll do is just push these aside. And I just built the fire a little bit ago, so I don't have a lot of embers yet. But anyway, a lot of times what I'll do is just push that aside, get myself a chair, popcorn popper, and some popcorn, and just sit here over the fire and just shake my popcorn. And I like this front bar because then I'm not holding this thing. I can rest it on there and just shake it real easy. So I also use it for that often. And everything's kind of got its place there. All my 
all my kettles and my skillets and everything go in that corner and I kind of keep everything else spread out. Um, my daughter likes to do a lot of Asian style cooking. Um, steamed dumplings like pork wrapped in dough, um, that style of dumpling. So we have this. It's an old early 1900s um, steam box, patent dates on it, 1907, um, made here in Ohio, and it's just a kind of like an oven, but it's made to steam. So we will fill this, we will get it hot and then fill this with the dumplings that she likes, and then before you know it, they're steamed. So anyway, I'm going to give it a second to heat up and then I will show you how it works. Don't forget the Dutch oven. Okay, so it's pretty hot. It's not as hot as it could be, but, but it's hot enough to show you. So basically there's water in the bottom. This whole thing fills full of steam. It'll leak out cracks and crevices. It doesn't build pressure. So then when you open it up, there's your your steam pouring out of there and that what's coming out here that's just steam from inside that oven so you can steam vegetables the little um, I don't even know what you call them little pork filled dumplings that she makes they're they're incredible I love them so anyway that's what we okay. use that for for this last one we got to bring her down a little bit um, so all the racking needs to come out get this great system out of there. This is by far my favorite one. So I picked up this old box, which is a rotisserie. Um, back in the early, early, early days, they were clock wind. This one has been converted over to power, but still has that old look. So anyway, it is a, it basically has a clock motor in it um, that just turns real slow. So that goes there. This is the other side of it. This I made. I didn't cast it. It used to be an old table, um, table with a lamp. So this was the base for it. Three eighths pipe come up to the stand, which was made for an ashtray. And then from here, it had a lamp that come up and had a head on it. So I just took that and converted this into a receiving end for my rotisserie rod. So the rod goes in the same spot, the same spot that was made for the lamp part of it, I use it to receive the end of my rod to turn on. And then this is cut at a square like most rotisserie rods are. It just goes in there like that. And then you turn it on. I can just use one of these rods normally just to pull that fire up to the front, close to the rotisserie. And then what I normally do is gather up some of those ashes from the back and throw here under my meat so my meat's not dripping all over the floor here. Um, but yet, I don't have a pan laying there or whatever. so. I just, and also I can, if I need to, I can bring the fire out a little bit underneath here. And you can just see how well this thing drafts. I mean, this fire is almost completely in front of the fireplace and it's billowing in there pretty good. So I have one more cool thing to show you and then that will conclude my video. Okay, it's the end of a hard day. You've been working, cooking, Need an ice cold beer? 
Blue Moon, my preference. I uh, got a block of ice. Um, I'm doing pizza for the family, my, my mom's house this evening, so I've got my pizza dough and, and my toppings and things in here. And I don't use this on a daily basis, um, but whenever I'm having gatherings, um, I like to put a block of ice in here. Um, it's easy to make a block of ice this time of year. You just I have a little box I can put outside or I keep one in the freezer in the basement. Um, so wooden hammer. Um, bottles of water, whatever can stay in here. The coldest spot on this is directly below um, the ice as that ice starts to melt the cold air from it rushes down and around a big hole here and down. The water has a tube that it drips through and goes into the draining system and drains out away. So anyway, I use this often whenever I'm having get togethers, gatherings, football games, whatever. Um, it's nice for people to see what people had to do in order to just have cold food back then. So I like to use it for that reason. Anyway, Hope you enjoy the video. I'll get doing some more stuff soon.